All right, joining us now is Kelly Vlahos. She's the executive editor, editor of the American Conservative. Kelly, thanks for speaking with us this morning. Uh, the president now saying he might have to adjust his plan going after Joe Biden. What would that look like on a debate stage? Well, I think a, a two-prong. I think he will really go after Hunter Biden and the, you know, the corruption issue that emanated from uh, the Russia investigation and impeachment. I think he'll really hammer on that quite a bit. Um, also, what we've been seeing in, in rallies of the last uh, week or so is that he's really kind of uh, punched on this issue of, of Biden being too old, perhaps um, being mentally unfit for the job. He's he's brought up more than once that 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 Joe Biden might be ready for the home, um, and that more radical members of his administration might take over. So watch who's waiting in the wings. Um, trying to unsettle voters on that score. So I think you're going to see a, a, a two-pronged attack from the president on the debate stage going forward, if Biden indeed is the, the nominee. Okay, and we'll just say, if Bernie is, how would that look like? Well, I think, you know, the president said it best himself um, that uh, the, the, it, we're going to skip right over socialism and go right to communism in terms of the attack. Uh, we saw this at CPAC uh, last week, where a lot of the speakers uh, who were, uh, you know, defending and supporting the president had used uh, communism as an attack, um, as a sort of fear word uh, in within the political uh, discourse. So I think that he'll go after uh, Bernie's uh, policies, uh, nationalizing, uh, taking away or ending fossil fuels, um, Green New Deal, uh, raising taxes, uh, um, you know, that, that will be the signal right there, uh, will be the nationalization, the communist uh, bugaboo. Uh, well, another candidate who shared some of those ideas, maybe not to that extreme, uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren, of course, announcing that she was suspending her campaign yesterday. Um, she also had to address an issue that, you know, only a woman would face on the stage, of course, dealing with gender in the race for the presidency. I want to play you what she had to say. Gender in this race, you know, that is the trap question for every woman. Uh, if you say, yeah, there was sexism in this race, everyone says, whiner. And if you say, no, there was no sexism, about a bazillion women think, what planet do you live on? Um, I promise you this, I will have a lot more to say on that subject later on. So we'll wait to hear exactly what the senator has to say more on the topic. Uh, but Kelly, this is 2020. Does gender really play a role in her campaign and why she ended up dropping out? Well, I'd like to point out that there is still a woman in the campaign, and that's Tulsi Gabbard. Mm -hmm. And by all accounts, Tulsi Gabbard should be checking all the boxes. I mean, she's not only a woman, uh, but she's the first Hindu uh, in Congress. She's the first Samoan American in Congress, and she's a veteran. I mean, she should ideally be one of the Democrats' favored candidates, but because she has uh, struck out at the establishment, like Bernie Sanders, um, she is is not of the body. So she's not considered a woman by the rest of the Democratic field, which I find very ironic and, and sad, really, um, that they could manage Warren and I, I heard uh, Kamala Harris as well talking about how this is a, a misogynist issue. Um, I feel like it's an establishment issue. And I have, like, like Senator Warren, I have plenty to say on the subject myself, as well, a woman. Yeah, of course. And as we recall, Hillary Clinton uh, was their choice candidate in 2016, so obviously a woman uh, winning that then. We are waiting for Elizabeth Warren to give her endorsement. Do you think she should endorse Tulsi Gabbard? Um, I, of course, I, I, I think she should endorse whoever she wants to endorse. Um, what bothers me is that she has made this, and you know, it's not only her fault. As soon as she got out of the race, the New York Times and other establishment papers were already sounding the alarm about this being an anti-woman uh, moment for the Democratic Party. So she can uh, endorse anybody she wants. I just find it um, disturbing that this has, this has become another uh, 
glass ceiling issue for the Democrats when they should um, examine why they don't have better female candidates on the stage. Um, I hope that there will be a woman president someday, but she has to uh, connect with with American voters. And maybe we should look at why she didn't connect or Kamala Harris didn't connect or AB, Amy Klobuchar didn't connect. Of course, you have, you're voting for the candidate along with the issues that they stand behind. Um, in the meantime, going forward, you know, we have Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders as the front runner. Let's disregard Tulsi Gabbard for a moment here. How crucial is it for them to pick a woman as potentially a running mate? Well, you know, all of what I just said aside, um, I think uh, for the Democratic base, for the enthusiasm factor of the Democratic voters in the fall, I think they would probably have to think seriously about putting a woman on the ticket. Personally, I think that Amy Klobuchar would be in a better position uh, to, to fill that role, because I think that she comes to the stage with less baggage as Elizabeth Warren, and I think that she checks the boxes in terms of her experience, uh, her um, nimbleness on, on the issues, um, and uh, she represents a state that could bring a lot of middle class and working class voters uh, to the polls, so she would probably be the best. Um, I do think it's important that, uh, you know, if I was advising the Democrats that they have a little bit of diversity on the ticket, given that Joe Biden is of a certain generation, he's older, um, he's been in Washington for uh, many decades, they, they probably need to expand their reach with that, with the ticket. All right, we'll wait and see what they decide to do there. Kelly Vlahos, she's the executive editor of the American Conservative. Thanks for speaking with us.